that caught my eye is, like in weddings in India, we have uninvited guests all the time. These people called the guests and even they didn't come, even with all the food ready. So that's one thing that, that came to our mind. I remember people tell me, you get uninvited guests all the time to the wedding um, to eat the food. But even with the food, these guests, the, the, in, the people that he invited did not come initially. Um, what I want, and we can see in the next verse, he, uh, he continues, he, since they denied his request, um, they ignored him and they said they paid no attention and they went off, one to his field, another to his business. So they thought they were too good for him, and, it's, and instead they killed his servants and mistreated them. And the king was angry that he sent his army and destroyed all of them. And so he went out and he invited people from all over the place, good and bad, and the, field, the hall was filled with guests. Um, so I want to kind of go through it and uh, go through a few points uh, that God touched, um, that God put on my heart when I was reading this. Um, the first thing is to respond to the call. We see in, in the scripture the, first, uh, the, the call that they talk about is the gospel call. Um, the call of the gospel, the call to salvation. Uh, it talks about he invited the Jews first, but they denied his call. They even killed his messengers, his prophets, and even Jesus, right? He killed, they killed Jesus, um, even, uh, even though they sent messengers to tell them to repent, but they killed him. Um, and finally, they invited, uh, the king invited everybody, which is us, all the Gentiles, and we were invited into, uh, we were grafted into uh, that tree, and we were saved, and we were, uh, we had the call of salvation on us. My point to you is to respond to the call, and most of us have already responded to the call of salvation here, but there may be some who haven't responded to that call of salvation. Um, and I want to implore you that you have, that we must respond to that call, that call that we are not worthy, but God saved us. God died, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and that he is calling us to live a better life in this world, a better example, right? He shed his blood on the cross for our sins. Do not reject the call like the Pharisees did, or the Jews did. Do not reject the call or harden your heart as they did. Um, because what happens to those um, who reject the call, they're thrown outside, hand and foot, into the darkness, where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now this is for the person who responded to the call um, and um, did not have the garment, but also for those who did not call, do the, uh, uh, respond to the call at all, he burned, uh, he burned their houses and he, they were thrown in outside. Now I implore you to respond to the call, that the call of salvation. If there's anybody here that hasn't responded, um, the next one is the garment. There are those who respond to the call but never put on the wedding garment. What is the wedding garment? It is purity, holiness, righteousness to put on Christ, the salvation that he's given us, right? All those things. In Ephesians 4, 22, it says, you are taught with regard to the former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on a new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. For those who have heard the call here, I beg you to put on the garment, the wedding garment. Do you know what happens to those who do not put on the wedding garment? It says, but when the king came to see the guests, he noticed the man who was not wearing the wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in without the wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. And eventually he was thrown outside where the tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing their teeth. Um, so I'm, do not make the mistake, mistake the people of Israel made. Pay attention and pay attention to the call that God has put on you and obey the call of God and put on the wedding garment to live a holy life. Put away your old self and put on the new. Remember who you are and do not take off your garment. For those people who may be going to school or workplaces, don't just put on your garment when you come to church, but put on your garment wherever you go to show that to show an example of who Christ is. So the people outside may see who Christ is and they may be attracted to Christ, right? Amen. And in 
Philippians 1 verse 27, it says, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. Live your life worthy of the gospel that we claim to proclaim, right? Um, then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. So whatever happens, I'd like to focus on that first part. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. So the first thing we heard is to respond to the call. If anybody who hasn't responded to the call, respond to the call of salvation. And if you haven't done that today, I uh, beg you to do so. If you have responded to the call, I ask you to put on the wedding garment, to put on the wedding garment of holiness uh, of Christ so that the people outside may see that you are pure of heart and of spirit. And finally, I want to say, to go even further and say respond to your calling. There are people who get the call and they respond to the call, but they don't respond to their calling. Every, God has placed a call in each of your hearts. Amen. God has made everyone unique. We have all been commissioned to share the gospel. That is our common goal. But everyone has a unique gift and talent that God has given you. God has equipped us with all unique ways to glorify Him only. Live your life not only worthy of the gospel, but of your calling. It says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. To you, everyone here is unique. There is not one that is the same. Even twins, they say they may be identical, but even they are different, right? All you guys are unique and you glorify God in a unique way. And so, when... The key is to respond to your calling. God has placed a special call in every one of you. But that special call may be different. It doesn't have to be like this, playing the keyboard or whatever it is. God has placed a special call in your heart. And I beg of you to listen to his calling. Don't be like the people in the parable. When they got the call, they ignored the call. Amen? And finally, if you accept the calling that you've received, and if you put on the garment, and if you receive the call of salvation, God's provision will be with you. So you have no, you have no need to be afraid. No need to, you know, the, 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 I, I know some people may be anxious to go back to school or um, because of the coronavirus or of school or to study in general or what, whatever you may be facing, whatever challenges that you may be going through, God's provision will be upon you, right? God's provision are for those who respond to the call and put on the garment. You have the provision of salvation. God provides for His people. God's protection. God will open and close doors for His elect. Right? If 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 you pray to God and if there's like two two ways before you and you don't know which way to go, I have faith and this is what I do. God, I have the faith that God will shut one door and open the other. God will direct your path. Right? That's what that is what the scripture says. So if you're at a crossroads today. Have faith in God that He will open the right doors for you. That's all you can do. God's counsel will be upon you, and the peace of God will be upon you. So if you have responded to the call, if you have put on the garment, and if you have responded to your calling, that God, God's provision will be upon you. And that is my message for you today, this morning. I know it's very short, but I, I pray and I hope that it has ministered to you this morning. Thank you.